Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Brie. Today's video is just going to be a quick video talking about my 2023 goals, kind of reflecting on 2022, what I hope to do going forward, and then I want to get into a little bit of a TBR. I've decided to not do very many TBRs next year because I just am horrible at sticking to them. I'm going to make a TBR. I tend to then not want to read the books. So, the way I want to do this one is just a little more simplistic, small little TBR of books I really think I will get to so that I can hopefully feel more accomplished but also not have such high expectations of myself when I am just such a mood reader. Without further ado, let's get into the video. First, before we start, I would love if you would leave a comment down below with any goals you have, maybe what your reading goal is, and if it's not a number, that's fine too. If it's just something you would like to do, a genre you would like to get more into, anything like that, I would just love to know. I don't think reading goals need to be just the amount of books you're reading. You don't have to read a ton of books to be considered a reader or to be accomplished in reading. I just think reading what you love and when you want to is the most important thing. So I guess let's start with just the general how many books I want to read. I think I'm going to go with 75 because that is what I had the goal as. I think I started the year off with a goal of like 50 books and then I blew past that so I ended up putting it at 75 and I read way over 75 but I think that's a really good number for me because this is the first year I've done book two for a full year and I think just the excitement of reading all these books is really what fueled me so I don't want to go too high and feel stressed out trying to reach 100 books but I also think I will read more than 50. So I think I'm going to go with 75 and I just want it to be there as some motivation, but not as something that I'm tied to or feeling stressed out if I don't reach. So that's why I did that. One of the things I started to do this year was to reach out into more genres. So I started reading the horror genre, which is something I had never gotten into before. I was really intimidated by it and I found some books I've really loved. And I still need to explore more in that genre because there's so much more to explore there. There are things that I didn't think I would love about certain genres, so I didn't read them. And I really think that I can find a book that I love in most genres. I want to branch out, and that's one of my goals, is to explore more genres and find what I like in them. So I'm going to continue reading in horror and finding more and more horror that I like. But literary fiction is something I kind of reached out to at the end of the year and found some magical realism that I've really enjoyed. So I want to explore that more find what I can like in literary fiction and what I maybe don't like. I have some ideas of what I don't like, but again, I haven't read a lot of them to really, really know. So that is a genre I really want to branch out into more. And then sci-fi is one that I've just never been a sci-fi movie watcher, reader, anything. I just don't really do the best with like space and things like that. And that's what I had a view of sci-fi. And then I read a Prayer for the Crown Shy and a Psalm for the Wild Belt. The Psalm for the Wild Belt is the first one by Becky Chambers and it's a cozy sci-fi about a tea monk and a robot and just learning and talking about life <laughs> and I loved it. So I think for sci-fi specifically I want to branch more into the cozy sci-fi genre and find some cozy sci-fi. I know Becky Chambers has min uh, multiple series that she has done I want to branch out into more of her works. And then I also have a couple other cozy sci-fi. I think I actually only have one more cozy sci-fi that I have on my radar. So if you have any recommendations, I would love that because I really want to explore that a little more. And along with that is kind of cozy fantasy. I have read a lot of fantasy before booktube and I kind of fell out of love with it. I feel like I'm not a big epic adventure person. And so I found the cozy fantasy genre and but I think that I will have an easier time picking out what I like in that because I am more of a fantasy reader so that's why I didn't really include it but basically I want to read more horror, literary fiction, and sci-fi to figure out what I like in those genres. Then I also want to read more nonfiction. I read a ton of nonfiction before I started booktube. It is one of the things I really like especially environmental or food related books. I really enjoy and I just haven't read it since I started booktube. I think I'm in the middle of my only nonfiction that I read this year and to me that's really sad because it was something I really really enjoyed reading so I want to get back to that. I think it's just because of reading vlogs and things like that I just didn't prioritize it but it's something I really want to do so 
I hope to read more nonfiction. Maybe shooting for like one a month would be really good and then I can just kind of take the whole month to read it. And that's kind of what I've done with this, um, the nonfiction I'm reading right now, which is Gathering Moss. And I really enjoy it. And I think just taking it at a slow pace has worked out pretty well for me. So that's my other goal. My goal that I think I had in 2022, but I haven't done, well, I've done well with it because I've read over a hundred books and the most, all of them have been on my TBR. But the problem is, is I keep buying more books. So I want to read down my physical TBR because it's out of hand and I have so many books that I can pick out from my shelves and read. But now I'm getting to the point which is just a problem I don't want to be having because it's kind of a ridiculous problem is that I don't want to pick anything because I have too many options. I have the privilege to own all these books so I need to read them and I think that the way I'm going to do that is I have kind of like a read a certain amount of books and then I can buy a book so that I'm reading down what I own before I buy a new one. We'll see how that goes. I love book shopping. I love going to bookstores. I love buying books. It's I love collecting books. That's another like hobby of mine and I love reading books but I just need to slow down a little bit on the book buying. So I think what I want to do is I want to have a certain amount of books I have to read then I can buy a book but then the if I unhaul some books and I take those in then I can use that towards getting more books but I don't want to just go out and buy books and then once a month I can do any new releases that have come out I could get a book because I want to be able to keep up with new releases, but I don't want to go crazy with buying books. So that's my goal because we also are saving for a house and we're trying to save for things and so be good to do it. I hope I can do it. <laughs> I am putting pressure on myself because I have so many books I am excited to read. So that's a goal. <laughs> the other goal I have is to read, finish more of the series I've started. So I think I'm in the middle of about 26 series and I have finished, started and completed some series this year, which has been great, but I just want to kind of read down some more of them. I don't really want to put a limit on how many series I can be in the middle of because I do have a lot of series I want to start, but I want to be keeping the ratio pretty good. Like I don't want to start a ton of new series and never finish the ones I had before. So I just want to make more progress in reading series and completing series because I tend to read historical mysteries. Those tend to be pretty long series, like six to seven books. And so it's a lot to get through. So I just kind of want to be making progress, not necessarily finishing a ton, but making a good progress on series and finishing where I can. And not just if I have a duology, not just like leaving that all year like I have done. So I'd really like to do that. So here's my little TBR. I have exactly one, two, three, four, five books because I didn't want to go crazy. I thought about doing one book a month and then I was like, you know what? Just pick out books you actually think you're going to get to and just leave it at that. So that's what I'm doing. So the first one is a nonfiction called Lab Girl by Hope Jarin. And I picked this up a while ago and I think it has to do with plant life, but like laboratory stuff where like working on like food science or something like that. I had this on my radar for a while and I saw it at um, a book fair that my local library was putting on where they were selling books. They sell them for like a dollar and it supports the library. And I picked this up and I've wanted to read it ever since, but I haven't. And I want to get to my nonfictions. And so, oh my gosh. And so I want to um, do that this year. I just realized that this lab part is dirt and it's like really raised and it feels so cool. It kind of feels like dirt, but like not in a bad way. Wow, that's really cool. Anyway, so I hope to get to this. It's not too big of a nonfiction too. It's not too much of a daunting one for me. So that's why I picked this one. And then I want to read The Bullet That Missed. I'm currently reading The Man Who Died Twice, which is the second book in the Thursday Murder Club series. And I'm loving it. So I know that this is one that I can complete. And I don't really know anything about this one, but I just think it's a series I've been really loving. And I want to be caught up in case he comes out with another book this year or next year. I want to well, in 2023 or in 2024. I, so I want to be caught up and read this series because it is one that I really have been loving. So yeah, this one is definitely on the list. I guess I have another book that I didn't put on this list. So I technically have six books, but that is Finley Donovan Jumps the Gun, which comes out in January. And I just know I'm going to pick that up at some point in 2023 because I loved the first two. They're in my top books of the year. 
So that is um, a book I also want to get to. The next one is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I loved What Moves the Dead by Tiki Fisher and I loved The Hacienda by Isabel Cañas and both of those have been kind of referenced towards Mexican Gothic and so I figured if I really liked both of those I probably would like Mexican Gothic. It's just one of those books that I really have no idea what it's about. I think it's going to be a gothic kind of horror story and I really found that I like gothic horror stories and so I think if I liked those two books and they were saying that they were like Mexican Gothic, then Mexican Gothic is going to be for me. And I've really heard a lot of good reviews on Mexican Gothic, so I can't wait to pick this one up. And I think that I will be picking it up when I'm in the mood for horror in 2023. The next one is um, Simone St. James, The Broken Girls. This is the last of Simone St. James's newer works that I want to work through. I think this was published in 20, I want to say 2017, 2018. And then she has a lot of historical thrillers that were published years before these and I want to get to The Broken Girls because I really really love her newer stuff and I do like her historical thrillers but this is the one I'm most excited about and this is also du dual timeline and I think it's following some girls who are at a school for girls but I think it's supposed to be girls who like were sent there because they did something wrong um and it's 1950s and then it's present 2014 and I think the sister of one of the girls who was sent to this home is like a now a journalist and she's looking into what actually happened there and again I think that Simone St. James really does like dual timelines and weaving them together really well so I'm excited to see how this goes and I've heard really good reviews on this one specifically and so if I've already loved the other two books by Simone St. James I just think I'm gonna love this one because this is the one I've heard the best reviews on and when I love an author I tend to like to read all of their backlist so I really do feel like I would get to that one in the next year. And then I want to start the Veronica Speedwell series by Deanna Reborn. I've heard so many good things. I really do feel like this is going to be similar to the Rexford and Sloan series for me, which is why I want to pick it up. Just the way people talk about it is similar to how I feel about the Rexford and Sloan series. So if you like the series, maybe try Rexford and Sloan. <laughs> it is my favorite historical mystery series out there. And so that's why I want to pick up this one because I've heard it's got slow burn romance, some found family elements. This one is kind of like they're on the run, which I think is, sounds really cool. And it's 1887. And so it's a Victorian type mystery where this woman, I think she's almost kidnapped, but she gets away. And then she goes to her friend for help and he is found murdered. So then her and her friend's friend <laughs> come together and they have to kind of figure out what's going on and I think he's supposed to be a bit of a curmudgeon. His name's Stoker and then she, Veronica, is supposed to be kind of like sunshine. So I think it's gonna be like a little bit of a grumpy sunshine, but I'm not sure, which is one of my favorites. So I just can't wait to get to this because I do think that this series is just one I'm gonna love. And someone is doing a read through of the entire series throughout the year starting in January. So I think it's the perfect time to read it. It was on Instagram. I just found her. Um, so let me look up who it was. Okay, so her um, Instagram is called Overflowing Shelf and her name is Danny. and I think it looks like she reads a lot of um, historical romance but she's um, doing in a Veronica Speedwell series read-a-thon, read-along um, from January 9th to May 1st. So starting January 9th is the first one and then January 23rd is the second and then February 6th the third, February 20th, 20th the fourth, and so on. So I'll link everything down below but I think I'm going to try to participate in that one because I think it'd be a good way to for me to get through the series and kind of make it a priority and I can always stop if I don't like them but I really just feel like these are going to be wins for me. So yeah so those these are the books I hope to get to plus Finley Donovan jumps the gun and I think that that's very doable. The one I'm most nervous about is Lab Girl but I really do want to make nonfiction a priority. I really appreciate you watching. I hope that you have a great 2023 reading year and you know set goals if you want if you don't want to don't <laughs> and it, it's all about having fun reading and so I just hope you have fun while you're reading that's my goal for you guys <laughs> is to have fun while reading and my goal for myself so yeah anyway thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time